If you looked at my next guest, Chris Dufay on Instagram, and you saw the photos he's putting up, the pretty much like the physical perfection that he's reached, you probably would not have guessed that he came from a background where he was overweight and really just depressed about his body. This story is about going from that stage and transforming his body and then next transforming his business. The Content Capitalist Podcast. To really go back through the genesis of the story, I was really overweight as a kid. I propelled into figuring out how to not be fat, not be overweight, not hate myself. Every diet and workout under the sun, I finally started to lose some weight. That inspired me to want to become a personal trainer. So at 18 years old, I became a personal trainer. I ran a personal training business throughout Sydney. I had the opportunity and I moved to Dubai. I started a fitness business there, did the same thing, but then completely burnt out. I was really unhappy. I felt like I was doing everything that I was supposed to be doing, but it was just like me on a stairway to nowhere. Then I started dabbling with like the the online business stuff, running a business in Dubai. And then we packed everything up because my wife came to me and she goes, we can't live here anymore. We can't keep living this life. Let's move to Bali. We've got a bit of money saved up. You can do the online thing and like give it a go. So three weeks later, we literally packed everything up, went to Bali. I spent three years in a tiny little room trying to figure out how to run an online business. It was an online fitness business at the time. I was really unhappy. I had no friends whatsoever because I was literally working around the clock the whole time, barely spent time with my family, kind of naturally gravitated into me helping other coaches be able to run their fitness business. Uh, And again, you'd think it would all be sunshines and rainbows and that was not the case at all. Last year, I was diagnosed with depression because I then got to a spot again where I was like, I've ticked the boxes of success. I have a multi-million dollar business. I have homes around the world. I had this amazing family, but there were still things missing. Unfortunately, it was me trying to figure it out by myself. I think the only outside input was like literally listening to podcasts and consuming like content that was out in the world and trying to piece that stuff together. When it comes to social media, a lot of people choose different strategies, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever the flavor of the month is. Now for Chris, he had a very strategic reason why he picked the platform of his choice, which was podcasts. My first podcast in 2014, that big jump for me was getting my face on video and doing it that way. I bought a like Canon camera and uh, a mic, like a a little shotgun mic that had to go on top of it. I had to get my wife to stand behind the camera to then hit record so then I could stand in front of it to shoot it. And sometimes it was out of focus. It wasn't even focused on me. It was focused on the background. So many things went wrong. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to shoot like selfie style videos. And I just did it every day. So I went through because I was like, I've got to put in the reps. And this is where I think we can use like the transfer of analogies between fitness and business. And so I gave myself the challenge. Every morning walk, I would shoot a video. I had it on my phone and I had it on a selfie stick and I would write a couple of bullet points on a sticky note and I'd put the sticky note on my thumb so I could shoot the video and have a couple of pointers as to like me remembering what the hell it is I was supposed to talk about as well. And I shot hundreds of those things, hundreds of them. And so it's interesting now because when people watch my content and videos, they're like, wow, you're such a natural in front of the camera. Like it just comes through so good. And yes, I do enjoy it, but it very much is a skill set that you have to hone and practice to be able to get there as well. So at the start, it sucked. It sucked so bad. It was horrendous. I think one of the biggest learning lessons that I took from that, that I want others to be able to take from it is you are going to suck at the start. Don't expect at the beginning and you be good at it. That's, that's delusion. However, The process is just to have courage so that you can have uh, confidence through putting in a constant process. If you've ever tried to memorize a sales script, then you've probably faced the same frustration I did and that a lot of business owners and people in sales have faced. Now, Chris is just about to share his strategy where you just have to remember three basic things in order to consistently close sales without having to memorize a whole bunch of crap. There's People that when doing sales, salespeople are giving these massive scripts to follow and they're like, here's the perfect sales script for you to follow, right? That could be like one of the angles for it. Now, I would rather come to 
the marketplace to come to the world and say, you know what, screw those big long sales scripts that put you into a container, make you sound like a robot, don't give you a proper conversation. I think you should only have a sales conversation that has three bullet points, right? And from three bullet points, you're gonna be able to increase conversions and be able to sell at a higher price point. Now, that's me having a contrarian point of view in the marketplace, which is essentially saying that stuff over there that's bollocks, that's not the right thing to use. This is what you should be using and it's on the other side of the pendulum. The reason why I think this is important is because if you're saying the same thing that everyone else out in the marketplace is saying, it becomes vanilla, like you just slot in with everyone else and that's that's a race to the bottom. But if you are able to do the thinking to then be able to say, you know what, what is a contrarian point of view? You're naturally going to spark people's curiosity and you're going to be able to at least hook them into consuming the content because someone's going to be like, oh, that's different, that's interesting. And it's using a right hook to then be able to get them to consume the content as well, which is obviously the content then actually has to be true and useful for them to be able to apply to get a result. Absolutely. You're, you're spot on the money there. And is that how you go into content creation these days? You look at how can I bring the flip side of the coin on this topic? Yes, literally. So this has actually been something like top of mind for me for the last like two weeks, um, which is me thinking about what are the buckets of content that I want to talk about, right? So for me, my personal brand, uh, like Christopher Dufay, I want to talk about things that is going to be surrounded about philosophy and wisdom. So how do I actually live a good life? I want to talk about health. I want to talk about wealth. um, And I want to talk about, let's say, relationships. They could be four buckets of content. Then from those four buckets, I want to think about what are the talking points for each of those buckets that is only a contrarian point of view, right? And so it could be, it could be anything when it comes to that, but it's, it is, much harder, I will admit, because you really have to do thinking. Like you have to sit there and really think things through. Yeah, the other thing is and whatever you, you say is going to be out there forever, right? So then pe- someone yeah, in the future it's is- be good. Yeah, if, if you go start flipping your your message too often, then people are, you're going to lose trust with the market. So you got to think this through. Yes, I agree. And if there's one more point I can bolt onto this, it would be you should only be talking to things that you are well-versed in. Like- If you've picked up, if one of your mentors or teachers or someone that you've listened to someone say something and then you turn around and want to create a piece of content, essentially regurgitating what someone else has said, dude, that that sucks. Like that sucks. So I think it's very much a case of talk to the things that you are well versed in so that you can truly add value with it. Hey, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I'm excited that you as a viewer have given me the honor of watching my video all the way to the end. If you want to watch the full length episode of this one hour podcast and get tons more juicy details, click right here or here, something like that. And if you haven't yet subscribed, you know what to do. Go slam that button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.